Facilities that make this program possible are provided by the City of Highland Park. Programs are produced independently by members of the community. The City of Highland Park is not affiliated with the following program or the producers of public access programming and is not responsible for the content. The following program does not reflect the opinion of the City of Highland Park. Hi, good afternoon. My name is Jennifer Dotson, and I'm your host for Poetry Today. Uh, today we're going to be discussing Weather the Weather, uh, an art and poetry display at the uh, City of Highland Park in their City Hall. Uh, the, this collaborative uh, event is our display is was inspired by this little ditty, Whether the weather be cold or whether the weather be hot, we'll weather the weather, whatever the weather, whether we like it or not. Um, and the uh, thought behind the tongue twister, uh, well, it just captures the fact that no matter where we live on this planet, we are all subject to the weather. And from drought to flooding, hurricanes to blizzards, we're all experiencing increasingly severe or extreme weather patterns, um, global ki climate change, traumatic events. And we're bombarded as well with weather alerts, images of suffering and beauty along with waves of information and data on our phones, computers, televisions. Um, and weather phenomenon may also be a metaphor for the storms of culture, politics, and personal relationships as well as the individual psyche. So uh, guest curator, myself, and uh, visual artist Catherine Schwalbe were invited by the Art Center of Highland Park to curate this show. Uh, and the exhibit is now on display at City Hall now through the end of February. Uh, so please stop by and check it out. Um, and I am uh, with two guests today who are featured poets in the show, uh, Betsy Katz and Emma Alexandra. Uh, Betsy in the middle is Dr. Betsy Dolgan Katz, is a teacher and mentor in a variety of academic and community adult Jewish education settings. Uh, she served as the educational director of the Cole Jewish Teacher Center, director of adult and family education for the Board of Jewish Education, and then as the founding North American director of Melton School for Adult Learning for 23 years. She's an author of various professional articles and three books on adult learning. Her latest book is Reinventing Adult Jewish Learning, uh, written as a result of a three-year fellowship from the Avi Chai Foundation. As someone whose entire formal education focused on English literature, <sighs> Uh, she <laughs> loves to write poetry and short stories. Well, we'll forgive her the stories, but we're glad she's writing poetry. Um, my other guest on the other side is Emma Alexandra, who's established the Koalenko Consulting Group in 1988, <laughs> born in Casablanca, Morocco. She and her Eastern European, European mm -hmm. parents, easy for me to say, emigrated to the United States when she was only 11. Fluent in six languages, she is an environmental planner, cultural intelligence strategist, oral historian, poet, mixed media artist, and she is passionate about giving voice to the unheard. One of the founders of East on Central Journal of Arts and Letters, uh, which is currently in its astounding 18th year of publication, uh, she is vice president of the Sister Cities Foundation of Highland Park and promotes cultural and educational exchanges with Sister Cities Puerto Vallarta, in Mexico, Modena, Italy, and Yoruham, Israel. Um, well, thank you both for joining me, <laughs> and, and thank you more th for responding to the call for submissions on Weather the Weather. I uh, was really happy that you both um, submitted, and, and different types of work. So since let's not b keep the audience in suspense any longer, <laughs> why don't we start with Betsy? Why don't you read your poem? OK, be happy to. It's called Snow Business weather, very timely. Um, three sections. November. Sometimes snow can be the only white in a gritty world when there is chaos, violence, and darkness invading mind and heart. Gaze on what is calm and pure. Let thoughts follow footprints to a better place. December. 
white whispers of snow drifting across the highway, ghostly curtains of delicate chiffon escaping the anonymity of frozen fields. And January, native Floridians call them snowflakes. They glide down from the north, carrying golf clubs, fishing rods, and mahjong cards, land on warm soil, and rapidly melt into shimmering pools. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> That's great. I, I think I was also, you know, uh, great humor at the end. I loved that first um, uh, thing about the gritty world and the um, uh, follow the footsteps to a better, better place. place. That was, oh. I just was like, we need to do that. That's a message. It should yeah, be on like the holiday cards, right. you know? That's uh, thank you. fabulous. <laughs> that was great. So thank you very much for sharing. And then yours is very short and sweet, so read it twice. Uh -huh. okay. and yeah. it, comes with, it comes with a visual, it too. It comes with a visual. It comes with this grasshopper that is hanging on to, uh, to grass. I love to take photographs when I walk. Oh, there, that's better. Um, of course, it's... Um, in, in this plastic cover, so a little hard to see. But um, so I well, walk along the lake a lot on Fort Sheridan and, and other places, and this is one of the mm -hmm. photos that I took there. And um, I just love those little buggers, literally. So this is what it says September wind brisk, grasshopper holds on, life in the balance. Since it's a haiku, I will do it again. Mm -hmm. September wind brisk, grasshopper holds on, life in the balance. Very nice. Lovely. And so this is a haiga so because it's a combination of a haiku and an image. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. Uh -huh. So when you haiga. just add a photo to any haiku, it becomes a haiga. Or an image an of image. any sort, okay. a gotcha. painting or... Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Very nice. Good to know. Good to know. Now this question is, so <clears throat> we did the call for submissions. Did you write the poem or create this poem in response to that or was it something that you already had in your repertoire that you thought oh this would be perfect for the show actually uh, in the case in this case I mm -hmm. did not I had the, the I looked for photos that spoke to weather or oh. to changes or to um, some kind of, of a little bit of turmoil mm -hmm. and um, and and found this one I found others but this one too and then I wrote a, a haiku to it so it was oh, in great. response to your challenge, oh, great. as so many times. <laughs> <laughs> your challenges are great. Yes, I love them. They just inspire creating deadlines and uh, giving a prompt. Oh, it does it. Yep. <laughs> really pushes poets to it does. Uh, put the pen, yeah. yep. get the, yes. sharpen those words. Okay, and, and for you, Betsy. Me? Um, these I had written at different times and different places, oh, okay. motivated by different factors. But I revisited them, and I realized I had a theme going through all three of these. Okay. So I tried to um, edit them so they'd be presentable and then put them in some kind of order to um, uh, give a different kind of picture of what snow can mean to different people. Sure. Oh, wow. Right. Well, I even have contributed a poem, uh, uh, two poems. Um, but I guess I'll just go with the uh, shorter one. Uh, this was also published a few years ago, actually 2011, time flies when you're having fun. Um, it's called Winter Wind, mm -hmm. and it's an etheree. Mm -hmm. uh, the oh, etheree is a syllabic poem which contains 10 lines and a total of 55 syllables. It is named in honor of etheree Taylor Armstrong, who was an Arkansas poet who died in 1994. Um, so if you're looking at it visually, the first line has one syllable, the second line has two syllables, and so on. Um, the tenth line, the last line, has a total of ten syllables. So I kind of like it because when you're working with that form, it, mm -hmm. it starts off very spare and simple and mm -hmm. then gradually expands uh, in words. So mm -hmm. anyway, this is called Winter Wind. Cold. West wind blows goosebumps on my pale skin, chills my blood to slush, turns my cheek to burnt film. Thin, dry, chapped skin protects not against winter's elemental force that licks an iceberg in the Arctic and whispers its truth to my inner core. So. 
Um, I like that. Lots Thank of you. weather. Lots, lots of weather. weather. <laughs> <laughs> and it's nice. I mean, I like the fact that you provided a, an image um, and a po you know with it. It was nice as a curator to mm -hmm. um, see the artwork that yeah. the artists selected and and try to find some sure. dialogue between the two. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so yeah, it's a Very it's a nice. it's an interesting interesting show. Um, any thoughts about poetry and art and this particular conversation about weather and climate change and mm -hmm. will it make a difference? <laughs> I don't know. Well, I think giving voice to climate change through poetry is mm -hmm. is pretty essential. I think we we need to do that as poets. Um, if we can, if we want to, but I think it's it is one more way to bring awareness mm -hmm. in a in a meaningful manner to others about what is happening to our planet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so I, I think I think it's it's great to have the um, the possibility of having that vehicle to mm -hmm. to express what what is happening to our earth. Right. Yeah. And I like the combination of art and poetry. Yes. And both of them allow you to bring together the body and the soul. Yes. Yeah. I mean, I, and I think we can't just do dialogue and mm -hmm. talk and mm -hmm. words and throw it around, which is unfortunately, words don't mean a lot in politics today. But by putting art and poetry together, mm -hmm. it captures these unified moments of heart mm -hmm. and soul and asks people, how do you really feel about this? Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, that's right. Very good point. Yeah. And it's, I think it's, it works cross-culturally, too. I think mm -hmm. that um, poetry and other languages would work as well to, yeah. to get the message uh, mm -hmm. across. Because as you say, you know, if you have, it's in your heart, and then you, you produce it through your mind, and it speaks, right. it speaks to others. And it, mm -hmm. it can be very powerful, I think. Mm -hmm. We do have one poet who wrote in both English and Spanish because mm -hmm. she was writing about um, President Trump's visit to Puerto Rico. Oh, yeah. Um, During the and so it's the perspective of a native uh, Puerto Rican and like, what is this all about? Yeah, right. but so it was the, the poet you very cleverly used both Spanish cool. and, uh, and English. But I definitely I so do too. like to have um, multilingual poems mm -hmm. um, and offer those w translation whenever possible. Mm -hmm. So file that away for future Good. reference. <laughs> if, you ever, if, you, if you speak a well. foreign language or you, are, you, or you know somebody who sure. speaks multiple languages. Yes. That was, uh, and sometimes okay. I think using a foreign language, uh, I mean language foreign to English speakers, if you, you can do it just for the phonetic mm -hmm. or just for the sound quality without, mm -hmm. even sometimes if you don't understand the words word for word, but right. sometimes the, you know, the cadence and the sounds can right. also have um, an effect because it's music. Poetry is music. Right. right. I, I also like the idea of, because I, I do do a lot of teaching in the Jewish mm -hmm. world, mm -hmm. looking at the source of words that are similar. Like, I just, I had to happen, happen to do this. I just, I was looking at the word blessing. Mm. And the word of the, the root of the word blessing in English is blood. Oh. Something to think about. Okay. Bless. Right. And the root of the word in Hebrew is knees. No kidding. Yes. Wow. So that blessing has different sources. So I think combining... Yeah. Languages can be very um, oh, revealing, yeah. Yeah. The, not only about poem and poetry, yeah. but about yeah. the culture yeah, and absolutely. What's, what it's saying. Well, oh, when, yeah. when you put out the, um, the challenge, um, Jennifer, for, for beverages, oh, yeah. so you know how I love tea very much, and <laughs> so I was thinking about tea because in Morocco, you know, tea is very, as, as yes. in Japan, you know, it's very yeah. important and you serve it a certain way. But the word for tea, chai, Mm -hmm. You know, it's actually an Arabic word, and it's also a Russian word. Uh -huh. And here we use chai to say a type of tea, so it's like we're saying tea tea. You know? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, and I don't know if the Hebrew is relevant yeah. in this, but it could be related to the word for life. Oh, like chai. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 And then in Polish, it's herbata, which means herbs made yes. of herbs, right. flowers. You know, right. herbs. So, it's 
Cool stuff. And then you write, when you write poetry, you research and you find out oh, more, more things. Sends me all it. over the place. Yes, I know. <laughs> I just love it. Did you, since you mentioned that poem, did you want to read that poem, even though sure. it's not related to the weather? Well, if we didn't have weather, we wouldn't have tea. Well, that's <laughs> true. <laughs> sure. I'll, I'll. It, it's called, Tea Brings the World to Me. Ooh. Tea leaves dried gunpowder rolled, glistening, black, green, oolong, lemon, roses, rose hips, rose water, essence, oils essential, Moroccan mint tea served ceremoniously, so like in Japan, seriously. Silver teapot held high, tea poured slowly to aerate tea imbued with scents of Morocco, spearmint leaves picked fresh, dancing in the aromatic blend, gunpowder green tea called pearl tea in China, North African twist. China, Japan, India, Nepal, Sri Lanka, Taiwan, Argentina, united in tea growing passion. Chai, Arabic word for tea, Russian word for tea, American word for commercial concoction resembling tea. <laughs> Don't be curious. <laughs> <laughs> Make your own chai, cardamom, cloves, cinnamon sticks, sacheting in the rich broth of black tea, generously enriched with ginger root grated fine. Ah, chai so fine. Mm -hmm. Tea fashionista, I revere mate, chimarao, cimarron, Spanish mate, cocido, Portuguese cha mate, tea gloriam nostram, glorious caffeine full yerba mate and calabaza, pass friend to friend, each drinking a gourd full. Argentina, Paraguay, Brazil, sipped through a bombilla straw originated by the Guarani, the Tupi, pre-colonial wisdom passed down, brewed perfection, counterbalancing oxygen sparse mountain air for hiker, biker, newbie tourist, centenarian. Wake up to your own Andes, your own hills climb, relax, energized, yes, all that with mate, mi te, my tea, monte, moi chai. An herbal sanctum sanctorum, sip tisan, chamomile, linden, rooibos, calm, heal, resolve sleeplessness, wakefulness, rejuvenate your senses, incense, yoga meditation under tea canopy interwoven by centuries of tea traditions full circle to Moroccan mint tea, spearmint scents, tea world, we've arrived. <laughs> Very nice. I had so much fun Sorry. doing that. <laughs> but I had to do research, you know, to sure. you know, that was, that was, well, Thank you again oh, yeah. for your challenge. No, no, <laughs> well, what are some of the other ways that <clears throat> you're inspired to write poetry? What are other things that inspire you? Well, besides, besides situations. having me res put a publish a mm -hmm. poem. Situations, uh, you know. Situations out in the world. world. Right, or places that I visit. Yes. I'm very much inspired by the Botanic Garden, which oh. is very close to me us. Too. Yeah. So, and I find that, that so much of it inspires poetry. Yes. Oh, absolutely. It's um, comforting and it's also challenging yes. when you talk about climate control or what yeah. the right. climate and stuff. And through the, sun, yes. through the seasons, it changes yes. and it's so beautiful. That is. I agree with you. So, Sometimes the places we go to, like yeah. the bluff, yes. where you say you walk yeah. around yes. in Highwood, it's yes. another inspirational yep. nature place. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, no. Na well, nature is definitely a good place to go for yeah. inspiration. Sure, um, colors, scents, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. so much. And then just the fact that it's it's meditative, but it's also it's real, you know. And 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 you see mm -hmm. the blossoms mm -hmm. are up, and then they're down, and then they're gone, and then <laughs> there's rejuvenation, <laughs> you know. And it's about us too, you know, in our yes. lives. It's just yeah. yes. Are there particular poets that inspire you as well, mm -hmm. that you like to read, or um, or that have, or that you go back to? Um, mm -hmm. Gosh, I've been. Um, Go, go ahead. I, I, I was an English major, <laughs> as I say, mm -hmm. almost all the way, and poetry was one of my loves all mm -hmm. through okay. school. Um, one of my first papers was on The Wife of Bath by Chaucer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I was a women's lib person when <laughs> back in history. But more recently, I find I'm revisiting the poetry, okay. and I'm 
pulling out those things that deal more with maturity, if I could use mm -hmm. a very good word, <laughs> as a, um, and old age. And mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. poets spoke to me when I was young. Mm. Um, I'm thinking of Robert Browning now. And other poets spoke to me now, speak to me now oh. in a very clear messages that mm -hmm. I wasn't getting originally. Sure. Mm -hmm. So that's important. Yeah. I, I, I've been very fortunate <coughs> to have more time to write now. I mean, I'm just making the time and then, you know, mm -hmm. Jennifer mm -hmm. says, sure. come on, let's go write something. <laughs> <laughs> um, and other, other yeah, SPS. But um, Mary Oliver is one of my favorites because she's such a wonderful um, mm -hmm. writer and, and nature and, you know, about life and what she, what she sees. and. And, and experiences, and also about mm -hmm. aging. She's just, mm -hmm. but also mm -hmm. since I've been trying to be more fluent in Italian, I've been reading like Petrarch. You know, I love Petrarch oh, and okay. sonnets now, okay. and I write, mm -hmm. I write those and, and Villanelles, which is a French 17th century type of poetry. But um, I've been I've been trying to read in the original language because you know I, I feel that if I at least get the vo the voice, the sound, the, you know, mm -hmm. the words, and then translation if I need to. Um, is, is just so much better, okay. and so that that's what that has been my um, my way of, of exploring um, what is happening both contemporary and and ancient. You know, mm -hmm. there's a new po uh, there's a poet I hadn't known about it. I just found out about in Rome when we were there this this year. His name is B E L L I Belli, and he he writes only sonnets, only Petrarchan sonnets, and he was a 19th century poet. Mm -hmm. But he wrote about the people of Rome in in the Roman dialect, and particularly women. He really documented what the life was like in Rome for women through poetry. And wow, I would not have expected mm -hmm. that. No. And wow. then the the uh, um, a contemporary photographer, a young man, he's mm -hmm. in his 30s or 40s, uh, has taken photographs of people now and and couple them with that poetry and there's a the, oh, along the Trastevere the river in Rome there is a, an exhibit all along the river bank that's maybe four or five blocks long poetry photographs oh, poetry it's just very nice. so talk about <laughs> discovering you know something yeah. new and yeah so I think he raised an, a very interesting point that I've recently discovered and that is the fact that poetry is permeating a lot of our ancient literature that we are not even aware mm -hmm. of. Mm -hmm. But if you go all the way back to the times that there weren't books, yeah, that's right. people would memorize uh, things. And it was easier to memorize sure, sure. poetry and then retell it Absolutely. accurately than it was just prose. Well, I guess like a rhyme has yes, is a way of, it's, it's a, both a mnemonic, mm -hmm. but it's also yeah. a way to, um, it's like a check. You know that the, the, the next word right. has to right. has to rhyme with the the word previously, right. you know, in the previous lines. So right. it's it, a form it helps. Right. Sure. Yeah. yeah, that's yeah. probably oral yeah. communication. It's, right. Or right. the griots in, in Africa and the, those beautiful oh, yes. stories they told in a lot of rhythm and and right. and, and it's, it's like chants and you know beautiful. Yeah, that's and then right. you're right. And it is easier to remember rhymes than pre, freestyle, you know, pre verse. Even the Bible has poetry oh, that sure. you just are reading along and today in the books or even in the scroll, mm -hmm. it's not different in, the, in its presentation mm -hmm. than the narrative. But mm -hmm. every once in a while you become aware of poetry mm -hmm. that is recited there and it, it takes you back to that time yeah. when it, there was only oral communication. Exactly. It's, it's so. wonderful. Well, we I, I suppose it could be that we would <laughs> all get back, you know, I, uh, you know, if, if these weather events uh, continue and, mm -hmm. and um, the waters rise and the icebergs all melt, um, mm -hmm. who knows? That's we right. might be uh, without our electronic devices. We would need arcs and, uh, again. <laughs> right, we need arcs again. <laughs> well, I, I have to say, I am glad that I live close to Lake Michigan oh, and um, mm -hmm. close to the Botanic Garden, oh, which yes. is sort of the repository for a lot of uh, seed mm -hmm. cultivation. Mm -hmm. <laughs> True. True. So, That's true. There's hope, right? Yes. So <laughs> one of the things I like to think about when I'm s sitting and wanting to m motivate myself to write mm -hmm. poetry are those big questions that come up. For example, yeah. do we give in to climate change? Mm -hmm. And do people of New Orleans have to move to different parts of the country? Or do you stay there and protect yourself? Mm -hmm. I mean, these big questions Huge also questions. become... Yep. part of my thinking about climate change, but also mm -hmm. part of my poetry writing, sure. trying to sure. mull over 
some of the questions and present different perspectives on yep. it. Yeah, the condition, so, our right. condition, our human How do condition? we relate to it? How, yeah. What do we yeah. do about it? Yeah, yeah, absolutely, I agree. So, 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 so much more, yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's a shame that large. the City Hall is, is um, well, I mean, it's, we, it's a it's a large exhibit. There's a, there's at least sixteen or seventeen poems, and and Great. at least that many or more uh, pieces of art, um, all on the mostly on the first uh, floor mm -hmm. of City Hall. Though there are a few um, artworks and poems up in the council chambers mm -hmm. where we have our uh, the city council meetings. Um, but it was a finite number of space. We actually had to turn away a lot of, oh, sure. uh, of work. Sure. Um, there was so much that we received, which is, was interesting because well, previously, the, well, it was wonderful, but it, you know, it's, it, it just does mean that you have to make those hard decisions. So I sort of wish that the city hall were a little bigger, <laughs> had a little more room. But you know, yeah. it's good. And we'll continue to um, have those kinds of, of displays that yeah. are um, Thought-provoking yeah. mm -hmm. um, and uh, to inspire, Very nice. inspire sure. people. Sure. I guess I'll, I will end with my other poem. I think I've got it. Just if I do it real quickly, I'll have enough time. Um, this is called "Storm Is Coming," and it was also published in East on Central. Thirsty leaves turn over, craving the sky's wet kiss. Trees hum and thrum, whisper in urgent rustlings and sudden swaying. Warm summer air drives a Harley across the prairie. Mm. Birds chatter in code. Do you hear it? Can you taste it? Mm. Distant deep rumbles of heavenly indigestion. Time slows with waiting. We hold our breath, wonder if it will pass, uh, pass over us as we exhale. Temperature plunges from dryer vent exhaust to de goosebump chill. Light grows green edges. Wind becomes aggressive with nervous agitation. Random drops fall fat in heavy surprise before the syncopated strumming cascade of torrents and streams, and it's here. The storm Ooh. has arrived. So, <laughs> cool. so yes, the show will be ex will be all the way through um, February 28th. Mm -hmm. uh, City Hall is open Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. until 5 p.m. and um, there will be an opening reception mm -hmm. uh, at 4 p.m. on Monday, January 14th, 2019. Mm -hmm. So people can come and there'll at least be a cookie tray. All right. <laughs> so we'll be, we're coming. No wine. We'll we can't, we're not allowed to have wine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I, I know that a lot of people don't like to go out in the in the cold weather, but mm -hmm. City Hall is warm. Yes, so that's I, right. hope, I hope I know you'll right. join us. And it's always <laughs> shoveled, and it's okay. Right, right. <laughs> it's 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 tender. It's it's yes, kept so that everything it's, uh, accessible, everything is accessible. accessible. Yeah. Um, but thank you so much for joining me. Thank well, you thank for you. sharing you. your poetry with us. Lovely. Um, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> we have to and get together at the Botanic Garden. We <laughs> will look forward to receiving more poems from you because, you know, uh, in 2019, the Poetry Challenge oh, yes. is about chemistry, honoring the um, uh, anniversary of the invention of the periodic table by Dimitri Mendeleev. Oh, oh, all right. Wait till my husband hears this. He's a chemist. <laughs> no, will he write a poem? He'll take a picture. Uh, <laughs> excellent. Excellent. Good. And then uh, the other challenge is about the land of Oz, and I don't mean Australia, but I mean the creation of the world created by L. Frank Baum, the author. Cool. Uh, there's an, um, it's an, the, I think it's the anniversary of his death, as well as the uh, Judy Garland movie. Um, oh. Uh, those didn't happen in the same year, but they did happen sort of like a big significant cool. year. Cool, so, sounds great. Um, and lastly, it's the Tricube, which is a form by Philip Luria, mm. and deadline for submissions is January 28th, I believe. Oh. Um, but this will be the the submissions we receive for this will become the highlight of our April Poetry Month celebration. Oh, wonderful! So I hope that you and you will <laughs> <laughs> contribute some poems. <laughs> Uh, for us for the 2019 Poetry Challenge and um, everybody keep writing and may we, we have a verse filled uh, right. new 2019 year. Yep. new year and, uh, and the persona poems are going to be. oh right yes also um, Highland Park Poetry and East on Central are collaborating mm -hmm. with Articulate Readers Theater yeah. uh, exactly. to present um, the history of Highland Park as told through the characters mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. who either witnessed it or uh, 
were significant in, in the history. Mm -hmm. So it will, it will be an interesting be and yes. exciting mm -hmm. event for mm -hmm. the sesquicentennial. Say Imagine. that 10 times fast. Right? Wow. Well, right? Sesquicentennial. <laughs> no, I won't do that. <laughs> <laughs> Very but, nice. So that, that's something to look forward to for sure. Yep.